My name is Matthew Kressel. I'm the creator of Moksha, and today we're going to do a walkthrough of a basic setup of a Moksha submission system instance. So after you go ahead and do the sign up, you'll receive an email with instructions on how to log into your Moksha system. Uh, there's a couple links there with instructions to documentation, uh, URLs, and how to go ahead and set up your username and password. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and visit your Moksha instance. In this case, we're just using the example demo.moksha.io, but the uh, subdomain for your Moksha instance will be the name you chose upon sign up. Uh, you're going to come to a page. This is the front facing uh, user page, the page that people will come and see uh, when they want to send a new submission. Uh, in their case, in your case, when you first set it up, you won't have an image and you might want to customize some of the information here on this page, uh, which we'll get to uh, in this tutorial. Uh, so you can go ahead and log in with the link that you have in your email towards the login page, or if you forget it, you could just scroll down to the bottom and click the login link right here. We'll go ahead and do that. It'll ask you to log in. And again, uh, when you first sign up for Moksha, you're going to get instructions on how to set your password. So let's go ahead and log in. So when you first log in, in this case, we have a few example submissions, but you're not going to see that. You're just basically going to have zero submissions. This is your basically your submissions index page. This is where you'll go to see incoming submissions and what submissions may be in your queue. This is going to be empty and you're going to have a little message at the top that says, congratulations, you have no new submissions. Uh, but I put some examples in this case just so we can uh, have a look around at, uh, at uh, what the submissions look like. Uh, so Moksha is organized into uh, basically two primary groups. Uh, the first group is publications, and uh, each publication has one or more submission types. So I'm going to go ahead and just under publications, we're going to just go ahead and go to all. So what you're going to see here is the name of your publication. When you first sign up for Moksha, you're just going to have one default example publication. In this case, we're calling it Sybil's Garage. That was a magazine that I published uh, about 10 years back or so. Um, and you'll also see on the right here the submission types, in which case you'll probably just have one submission type initial setup that says something like submissions. Um, so like I said, there uh, Moksha has two primary structures, uh, public, uh, publications and submission types that belong to publications. So in this case, you can see an example is Sybil's Garage is the publication of Sybil's Garage has two submission types, fantasy and science fiction. So you can see, for example, if you're if you wanted to segment out different submission types for your publication, you can do so. And I'll show you that. So the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and click on the publication to make sure all the settings are correct. Uh, so when you click on a publication or a submission type, you're just going to uh, see the uh, information display to you. Uh, in order to change it, you need to have administrative access. Your default user that you created when you signed up will have access to do all of this. But when you create new users, they may not have access to it. So you're going to have to give them permission. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But basically what you're going to want to do is just look at the basic settings here. Publication info, submission types guidelines, etc. Make sure it's all correct. Uh, if it's not correct or you want to change anything, just go ahead and come up here to the top and click edit. Okay, that takes you into edit mode and you can pretty much change everything here. You can change, you know, the name of the publication, the slug, this is what appears in the URL, short name, this can be used for things like um, file names, automatic file name generation, uh, description of your publication, etc. whether or not you're open or closed, uh, private submissions. This allows you to uh, submit um, manuscripts via a private URL that is not publicly accessible. Uh, people need to have this private URL, etc. And uh, languages. Our language support is in beta, but we do currently offer uh, Spanish language front-end submissions. Uh, yeah, and then you can just go ahead here on the left-hand side and you can go down each of the uh, options and make sure that the settings are correct for your particular uh, publication. Uh, specifically, you'll probably want to make sure that the editor is assigned to you or the person that you want to uh, be the editor of the publication. An editor is just someone who has a little bit more permissions to do things with that publication, and they're also going to get notifications regarding that publication. 
Um, so this should be automatically be set to yourself when you first sign up for Moksha, which is fine. Uh, the image, um, it can be up to 970 pix pixels by 250 pixels, and you'll see it'll appear at the top here. And let me just open a new page uh, to show you what that would look like. If I um, go ahead and try to do a new submission here, you'll see that that's the uh, graphic Sybil's Garage, which we, which is the publication's image, displays before the, um, the when the user, uh, you know, does a new submission. You'll see it at the top. So you can have a, like a nice logo for your publication uh, as people submit. So the next thing you're going to want to look at after the um, publication settings is the submission type settings. So you can uh, view that in, in multiple different ways. Um, so you can see over here on the left we have submission types. We can click on either one of them to go into there. Uh, if we're just in uh, viewing the publication settings and not in edit mode, again, we can just click submission types, pick one of these, uh, and go into them. The other option is you can just at the top menu, hover over your publication and choose your submission type there. So let's go ahead and check science fiction. Click science fiction. Okay, it takes me into the science fiction submission type. Now, submission type is really where the meat of Moksha is. It's where pretty much you can control all workflow through the system. There are a lot of options, but the basic setup with a Moksha submission type is engineered to allow you to start going, to start receiving submissions immediately. Uh, I'm just going to run through some of the high level stuff because there's a lot here and I'm going to do uh, tutorials for uh, the more advanced options in other videos. So in the, uh, what you want to do specifically, and um, I'll just say again, this is very similar. It's pretty much identical to the um, concept of the publications where you have, you're in viewing mode where you can view the settings. And if you want to change anything, you just go ahead and click edit. So let's go do, let's do that. Let's go into edit mode. I go ahead and click edit. This takes me into edit mode. And again, we have the tabs on the left hand side showing uh, all of our options for the submission type. And uh, here we can change those settings. So in the, in the general tab, we have name, description, uh, what publication this belongs to, whether or not it's open, closed, or archived. Here's one you, you're probably going to want to change. The word count. What is the maximum word count you might want to allow? In this case, the default is 15,000 words, but let's say you're doing novels. Maybe you want to do 120,000 words. Or let's say you're doing flash fiction and you only want to do 1,000 words. Okay, great. I set it to 1,000 words. Anytime you make a change, just go ahead and uh, to the bottom and just make sure you go ahead and click Save. Uh, you get the little message, the submission type has been updated. Okay, and then we scroll down and oh look, now the maximum word count is 1,000. Uh, here's some other options. Do you want to show the queue position to people viewing their submission status? This would say yes. Some publishers opt not to show, uh, re, uh, some, you know, show that, that to authors. They, they opt to keep that private. Show the average response time. Um, you can control the colors, the way uh, areas of Moksha, both to the public and from the slush reader standpoint, um, the way the uh, certain sections appear. You can control whether or not the comments are private. So this would, for example, uh, allow you to leave a comment on a uh, submission, but then other slush readers would not be able to see those comments. Anonymous submissions uh, hides author names, and other identifying information from the submission and uh, a bunch of other options. So I'm not going to go, like I said, I'm not going to go over all of them. I'm just going to go over the high level uh, stuff in this uh, tutorial. I want to try to keep it brief just to get you going as quickly as possible. So the, the next tab uh, here is editors. Um, if you wanted to have more than one editor of a publication, you can absolutely do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click add. Oh, look, I want John DeFool to be my editor. I click add. Boom, now he's an editor. Um, and that means that he gets uh, notifications related to this submission type and um, has a couple more permissions, you know, um, basically when it comes to anonymous submissions and a few other uh, specific Moksha functions, the editors have 
uh, basically administrative rights over that submission type. Uh, you're probably thinking now, well, how do I add another reader if I want to add another reader to Moksha? I'm going to show you that just in a minute. Uh, the other thing we want to look at is file settings. This is, uh, you know, the file types that you're you're going to allow. Moksha allows um, <clears throat> a, a lot of different types. We have, uh, you know, text types, RTF, Word doc, uh, PDF, uh, open document. That's like LibreOffice and a more uh, portable uh, format. Um, we also support uh, images and EPUB and, you know, ebook file types, EPUB, EPUB Mobi and uh, also audio. You can upload MP3 files. For example, some of our publishers use Moksha to um, submit um, audio demo tapes, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other thing that you're probably going to want to look at is workflow. Workflow is one of Moksha's most powerful features. Basically, what this does is it allows you to set up automated forwards. So, for example, um, do you want new submissions to forward to a particular reader? Well, you can do that here. Would you like a new submission to have its status automatically changed to a particular status? You can do that here. Would you like to get an email every time a new submission comes in? You can do that here. Um, would you like to, to notify certain people when submissions come in? You can do that here. Just go ahead and click Add Notification choose the person and click add whether or not you want the attachment and now anytime a new submission comes in that person's going to get a notification uh, automatic forwards this is interesting for example if you want to say when you have a story that is recommended let's say you're a magazine and someone submits a story and you say i, I like the story i want to recommend it well maybe you want that story to go that recommended story to go to a particular person Maybe you have a second reader or a copy editor or somebody um, that wants to give it a second look. Well, you can do that right here. You can just add an automatic forward. The rating system uh, is exactly what it sounds like. Um, you can have Moksha automatically recommend a submission or not recommend a submission based on a certain minimum rating. So in this case, I have it set to seven. So if you rate it, <clears throat> And by the way, the ratings go from 1 to 10, but you can change that. Um, in this example, I have it set to 7. So submissions rated less than 7 will be not recommended. Submissions rated, rated greater than or equal to 7 will be recommended. And uh, like I said, below here you can change the color of the um, rating. So for, you know, by default, it's from red to poor and green to great. So um, you can change that here, just a color wheel, and you can change a description. So uh, we have some publishers uh, in Moksha, um, you know, who only want to use one through three. They don't need the rest. So that's fine. You can do that. You can just change the name here. And remember, when you do change it, so I said really bad. When you change it, any setting in Moksha, just make sure to click save. Okay. So there's a lot of other options here that uh, I'm not going to get into immediately. Uh, I'm just going to try to do the high level one. So let's just skip to messages. These are messages that will appear to the reader when they are submitting through Moksha. Here's the one submission introductory message. Please fill out the following form. Maybe you want to have specific instructions. You can do put those here. Submissions received message. What's the message that the person gets after they submit through Moksha? Well, that can be controlled right here. And uh, what, what do they see if Moksha submissions are currently closed? Again, you can edit all of that here. The other cool Moksha feature, and uh, another one of its most powerful features, is the form letters. So you can, Moksha, um, when you first get a new Moksha account, sets up a, uh, several basic form letters to use, uh, which you can totally edit. But uh, in this case, uh, you can see that there's some defaults that are set. So if you're doing a rejection, Moksha has a default rejection form, acceptance form, rewrite form, contact form, confirmation form. They're all set by default. There's very little you have to do out of the box to get going, but I'm just showing you, the, you this in case you want to edit it. So let's say, for example, uh, I want to edit my rejection form that you can do in multiple ways. You can click here, view forms, or you can just scroll down and find the form you want and click on that one in, in particular. Uh, you go ahead and click on it, and uh, as you can see here, 
there is all the information that you can possibly set on that form. Uh, this is a little more detailed. I'll go into customizing rejection forms later. But uh, what you can see down here is the example of what the rejection form would look like. And let's say I want to say, um, add a little bit more. Thank you for sending this to us with an exclamation point. And then you can see the example down here. It shows what that rejection letter would look like with an example person. So you can see exactly what you're changing and what you're doing and what your rejection letter will look like. So, uh, and you can have more than one. For example, you could have several different rejection letters. You could have uh, one that's like, you know, thank you, no thank you, or you could have one that says, thank you, please send us more, or th uh, thank you, you know, this didn't quite work for us, but maybe you can send us something in the future. So you could have pretty much as many rejection or form letters as you want. Uh, and the other thing you just want to make sure is that the submission type can access that because you might want to have different um, form letters for different submission types, right? Because you might have a specific rejection letter for your science fiction as you do fantasy. You might have different editors for each. So why are we using the same rejection forms, right? So in this case, Moksha allows you to specify which submission types can use which form. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Save. So we save those edits. Last thing I'll, I'll do for this subscription, for, excuse me, for this um, tutorial is, um, well, two things. Uh, I did want to uh, point out that when you first go into Moksha, uh, you're going to want to uh, fill out your billing contact information. Uh, just go ahead and fill this out. This will um, allow you to subscribe to Moksha and uh, basically keep your, your Moksha instance running. So you just fill that out, click, click Save everything's saved. If you want to check on your subscription status, you go ahead and click that. Um, and we'll just do that real quick. Take a second here. There we go. We're, subs we're subscribed. Our status is good. And then it shows us um, how many um, publications and submission types we, are, um, we can have with our current subscription plan. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you is just readers. So let's go ahead and click view readers at the top here. So as you can see, we have just two readers here. So what are the readers? Readers are basically um, your user accounts. Uh, if you if you want to access Moksha, if you want to use it, you need a reader account. So um, for example, John Q slush reader is one reader. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this reader and you can see some defaults for them their name their email what status they have what time zone they're in etc um, and you can click and see what permissions and submission types they have access to etc if they have any uh, email forwards which I'll get to in a moment but like before if you want to change any of this information you should go ahead and click uh, the edit button at the top here and you can go ahead and edit that uh, time zone. Uh, you know, all readers have the ability to edit their own time zone. And Moksha does update it. So, for example, if you get something in, uh, you know, 12 p.m. Eastern time, and then you have a reader in Pacific time, uh, they're going to see that as 9 a.m., right? Three hours earlier. So Moksha is time zone aware and will display the time, the exact time based on your time zone and uh, not on the system time, which is, which is, I think it's, it's very useful. And it's the same thing for, um, you know, people submitting through Moksha when it displays time zones to them, it tries to guess their time zone based on their location and disp displays the local time to them. So for example, if you have an open or closing submission period, it will display their local time to them, which is super useful. And you don't, no one has to do, you know, look up the time zone difference between their location and, and the uh, public publisher. But um, yeah, the, so that's how you would uh, change the reader's basic information. You click on submission types. You can give them or revoke access to particular submission types. Permissions is important, right? So uh, there's a bunch of permissions here. Most of them should be uh, self-explanatory. Um, you just click yes or no to, to see if uh, to give them permission to, to that. Or, for example, you could copy the permissions from another reader so let you know let's say you 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 wanted to create you know 10 readers with all the same permissions you can just click you know i wanted them all to be 
John Q. Slush Reader, well, I would just click copy and then you see it like it ships based on that reader. Again, what you want to do is click save, make sure that you're saving your uh, changes. And lastly, I'll show you uh, if we want to create a new reader, just go ahead and click view readers. And then at the top here, we just go ahead and click add reader. Now it's going to ask you some basic information, put in their first name, last name, status, which I assume you would want active, their time zone, etc. Uh, most of this information is optional. Uh, and you want to just make sure that they would have access. Click on submission types. Give them access to the submission type, at least one, right? Because otherwise, why are you creating an account? Uh, give them access to at least one submission type. Click save. They will then receive an email with instructions to log in and set up their password. And uh, lastly, I know I said two more things, but I just thought of one more thing I'd like to show you, is if you go ahead and just, just click on uh, the Moksha um, logo, or you can just go to submissions, all open submissions. There's multiple ways to view submissions in Moksha, but the easiest one uh, at the beginning is probably just click on the Moksha logo. That takes you to the submission index page, uh, w which is, basically your home page and here you can see all the submissions that have come in through the system so in another tutorial I'm going to show you uh, how uh, to work with submissions themselves in Moksha so I think this is a good place to stop but uh, yeah so this is the basic tutorial on how to set up the initial Moksha instance thanks for watching